All right. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kelty, for this amazing challenge. And thank you, the workshop organizers, for giving us this opportunity to present our Islam system, called, uh, which is called Wicat. I'm Milad Ramazani, and uh, I'm glad that uh, this year I had this opportunity to lead uh, our participation in this uh, great challenge. Also, it is great to hear that we are the winner of this competition. Uh, let me first introduce a bit um, who we are for those who may not uh, know us yet. Uh, we are part of the Robotics and Autonomous Systems Group at CSIRO.061 based in Brisbane, Australia. In this video, you see our site, uh, which is called uh, Queensland Center for Advanced Technologies. Uh, at QCAT, we have uh, many robot platforms and equipment that facilitates research and development in uh, robotics. Also, CSIRO.061 participated in the DARPA subterranean challenge where we got the best localization performance th thanks to uh, Wildcat. Uh, that's it. Now uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Wildcat, the SLAM uh, system we use in the Hilti challenge. Uh, Wildcat is a lighter inertial SLAM system uh, in which the odometry and SLAM uh, concepts are inspired by earliest SLAM research uh, conducted by Michael Bosi and uh, Robert Zellot in CSIRO.61. Wildcat has been heavily tested in various environments such as tunnels, caves, and on different platforms, including drones and uh, our handheld devices. We call them perception packs. You see on top, uh, the flat versus the spinning pack. Recently, Whitecat demonstrated the best performance of localization and mapping in the DARPA sub-T challenge, where the performance was reported as zero uh, person deviation, the popular zero person deviation compared to the grant rate. Also, based on Whitecat, a number of companies like Automap and Amazon, uh, which are spin out uh, components from CSIRO, make their products for serving applications, Amazon for aerial serving and uh, Automap for uh, uh, serving on the ground vehicles, basically. Um, on this slide, I uh, talk briefly about uh, Wildcat pipeline. Later, I, I will introduce a few references where we described Wildcat uh, different components in detail. Nonetheless, Wildcat uh, has a modular configuration its major modules are Wildcat Odometry and Wildcat uh, PostGraph. The Odometry module is a sliding window optimization in which IMU and LIDAR measurements are efficiently tightly coupled uh, using uh, a uh, continuous time representation or in a continuous time fashion. Uh, for incorporating LIDAR measurements uh, into the optimization, Wildcat generates circles from LIDAR measurements. After uh, this window optimization, the local trajectory and the undistorted circles will be encapsulated in submaps, uh, which will be used later in a post-graph optimization to find revisit areas and consequently generate a globally consistent map. Apart from the odometry and post-graph modules, uh, Wildcat has an offline module in which the information obtained from previous modules are used in global optimization to generate maps as accurate as possible. It is as if uh, we have a very long uh, window optimization, including all the measurements uh, throughout the trajectory. We use this module for submitting our results uh, to the challenge, not the online uh, results, obviously. Uh, if I want to highlight uh, some of the Wildcat features, I can point to its real-time operability. Uh, running on embedded CPUs, multi-process and multi-thread options, as well as uh, low bandwidth map sharing, allow single agent as well as multi-agent SLAM in real time. Uh, this has been uh, demonstrated uh, during uh, SOPT challenge, basically. In multi-agent, Wildcat can seamlessly support decentralized collaborative localization and mapping where agents exchange their submaps via peer-to-peer -peer communication and independently optimize the collective post graph. Last but not least is uh, switching to the offline mode, which is more suitable for applications such as uh, serving 
uh, where uh, precision, uh, we can say precision is more important than uh, speed. Having said that, now um, I show some results of Wicket over some of the data sets collected for Hilti Challenge uh, 2022. The evaluation results for experiments three and four, uh, construction stairs and construction upper level one, respectively, respectively are seen on this slide, along with an animated map for each sequence. The average error um, over the several points in experiment three is less than one centimeter, and in experiment four uh, is less than two centimeters. For experiment um, five and six, uh, which are the upper level two and three on the same uh, construction site, I believe, the average error is eight millimeters and uh, almost nine millimeters respectively. Uh, also the visual inspection of the maps shows uh, the accuracy and the global consistency of the maps generated by white. On this slide, uh, I'd like to show you a fly through of the Shalinian map. This data is categorized as hard apparently because of narrow passages and as a result, narrow light of view. However, as seen, Wildcat managed to localize precisely in these areas, uh, which has a kind of degeneracy. This is the inter internal side of the building and you see all the edges are well aligned and this is a view of the ceiling. Again, we can see all the details. This is uh, well aligned with our exhaustive results in the toughest uh, environments. That was about Wildcat and uh, a Hilti Challenge. I'd like to take advantage of this time and uh, introduce our QCAT data set because it overlaps with the aim of uh, uh, this challenge. Recently at QCAT, we deployed a set of survey targets, um, as you see at the bottom left. Uh, using our flat and spinning perception packs, uh, we collected LiDAR inertial visual data. You're able to select the targets uh, in the generated maps, as you see at the bottom right. And later, uh, we are able to evaluate the map accuracy based on the several points. An advantage of uh, this data set is its diversity. Uh, we have a structured and unstructured areas. The indoor area has long corridors, staircases, connecting uh, multiple stories. Also, we have a tunnel section, as you see on the left. Uh, this tunnel uh, is quite challenging for state-of-the-art SLAM systems uh, due to uh, a kind of air-conditioned uh, environment uh, it has. Uh, the data set is um, introduced um, in our Wildcat paper. Uh, later, I'm gonna uh, introduce this paper, which will be in archive uh, this week. Uh, we are also, so perhaps you know, this data set uh, can be used um, in the next challenge uh, for Hilti. We are happy to collaborate with um, Hilti organizers. Um, so I'd like to wrap up my talk uh, with raising a couple of items. Wildcat robustness and versatility have been examined through exhaustive stress testing in a broad set of extremely challenging environments and uh, mission critical applications. As we move forward, we'd like to move toward embodied AI SLAM as a research direction. For example, we'd like to use our deep learning place recognition approach uh, called Lock net which will be presented tomorrow in the afternoon in session localization uh, first, if I'm not mistaken, in room uh, 113B. Also, there is a still a room uh, for improvement um, on multi-agent localization and mapping. A colleague of mine, Kastra Fususi, is working uh, in this area. Uh, regarding research to Wildcat, uh, sorry, regarding references to Wildcat, as I said earlier, we will publicize the Wildcat paper these days. Uh, this paper is um, um, specifically written uh, for Wildcat and uh, describe uh, different components in Wildcat in detail. Um, and uh, for now, you can have a look at um, our uh, DARPA paper, which is in uh, Fed Robotics. Uh, finally, I'd like to say uh, regarding research on our Wildcat SLAM plus, uh, plus deep learning, we have postdoc, PhD, and internship opportunities for students. 
please contact uh, Paymon Mubadam if you are interested. Uh, thank you for listening. Please visit um, our website and follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, you can uh, follow um, our videos on YouTube channel as well. If you have time, um, I'm happy to answer your questions. Otherwise, you can uh, email me uh, to ask your questions. Thank you very much.